Hey there, welcome to Ash and Wells Minis, or welcome back as the case may be. My name is Ash, I make minis, and today's video is a prompt collaboration with Aira from Bentley House Minis. Aira's projects have definitely been a huge inspiration, and I cannot wait to see how she interprets our shared prompt, Snails. I'll be leaving a link to her video, channel, and both of our social media platforms down below, as well as some other relevant links to things that I talk about throughout my process. So definitely check out the links and share the love. So for the base of my house, I'm gonna use this apple snail shell from an old aquarium of mine. And I wanna build a whole little scene and fit it into this case for Chessex polyhedral dice. I was super excited to find one that didn't have any major cracks in it. So I'm definitely not a planning sort of person when it comes to any kind of art, especially minis. I'm usually a fly by the seat of the pants kind of person, see how it goes, figure it out. But today I do want to try to stick with a plan and have things go smoothly. So I'm going to build a house out of the shell and then I'm thinking I want it to be perched on top of the tiniest cliff you've ever seen in your life. Definitely with a little deck. I had an idea to do like a dock and some water effects. We'll see how much of this stays. I might change things up as I go along. We are confined to a very small space. Definitely need some itty bitty windows for surveying our land. Yeah, so here's where we're starting. It'll be fun. And I'm going to be using a coffee stir stick as the front door. That seems like it should be the right size. Now I need a template because I have to build the face of the house, the section that the door is going in. So I'm going to use some tin foil, just smush it into the shell um, so that I can get some sense of what shape this cavity is so that I can build the facade, which I'll glue in later. Now I'm going to trace this shell-shaped lump onto some cardstock, which I then refine until it fits perfectly into the shell at the level I want it. Trace my level onto the inside of the shell, and then use that as a template to cut out my final piece, which is a scrap of mat board. And there's lots of refining in this process. It definitely took some time. And now I can figure out the front door. I'm going to trace the level that I want the deck to be at and then kind of play around with where I want the door. And I figured out that the coffee stir stick is too big. So lots of shaving and shaping and sanding until it looked to be just about in scale. Not that we're measuring anything in this process. It's all by eye. Now I'm a huge fan of a green door, so I'm gonna stain my pieces real quick, the main part of the door, as well as some thin strips that I will glue on in a Z shape to give a little bit more texture. Now you probably can't see it very well, but I am currently gluing on a door handle, which is a piece of black paper bent into shape. So cute. Cutting out the opening for the door and filing it down until it's perfect. I do lots and lots and lots of dry fitting throughout this process. And we need more texture. I don't have access to tiny rocks, so I am gluing tiny, tiny pieces of cork onto the facade, kind of in an arch around the door and that'll give me my rock texture. I think it turned out really, really well and I definitely need to utilize cork more. Filing in a hole for the window was terrifying, but I just used a triangle file and went really slowly until I got an opening. And I decided to leave it plain. I didn't add any trim once I had the shape filed in the way I wanted it. Felt one part of this process could be simple. But I think that it turned out super cute and effective. 
I glued in some scrap pieces of mat board using the leveling mark from before, and those will support the facade as I glue it into place. So freaking cute, but definitely got to remember to clean up my glue as I go. I added a thin layer of glue and that'll help the clay stick to it. I'm using, I believe it's DOS modeling clay and just going at it with whatever tools I have around me, just trying to get it really smoothed in around the rocks. I don't want it to be too lumpy and I can't help dry fitting the door. Just checking my progress as I go. Ugh, so good. I decided I want to add a dormer. So I'm using a piece of black paper as the base and shaving wood very thinly to be the shingles on top. Once that dormer is in place, I'm adding just a little bit of glue as kind of a weld to help hold it in place extra. Definitely smoothing out as I go because we don't want to actually see the glue. And that shaved wood makes perfect shingles. I'm so happy with all the texture that's coming into this. With that done, let's check and see if the door looks cute one more time because I just can't help myself. <sighs> I cut out another piece of mat board for the base. There's my house. And we're gonna build a hill. I'm using an armature, just more smushed tin foil. And just kind of organically shaping it until it kinda looks like a hill. I'm trying to get a variety of shapes in here so it's not just a cone. And I do have to make sure that this entire thing fits within that case. So there's lots of fitting and reshaping and moving and playing. Once I have confirmed that this entire setup does indeed fit in the case. I'm gonna add some stability to my cliff, just glue and pop, not popsicle sticks. What are these? These are toothpicks and snipping off the extra. A quick layer of tacky glue will help my clay stick. And again, just more DOS modeling clay. And I'm just gonna smush it around and smooth it out at first. And I can add texture later. I'm super pleased with the texture that I got using tin foil smushed into clay. I think it Turned out pretty rock-like. Then to recreate that seat at the top, I'm squishing the house down into it and then molding the sides so that it holds it nicely. Of course, double checking that it fits because I'm paranoid. I think we're off to a good start. And now for some Extra craggy rock texture, I'm using bits of ripped up wine cork just pressed into the clay. I think this texture is super fun and I definitely want to do more of it. To unify the surface and kind of get it to all look like one unified rock, I'm gonna use a Black Magic Craft base coat. Uh, I will link his video below. It's mostly Mod Podge, some black paint, some other stuff. You can get the deets by watching his video. Definitely overbrush so that you don't have anything gunking up your texture and details, because that would be sad. And ground cloves. Why not? Uh, this is a great dirt texture. 
and it kind of just smooths out the transitions between cork and clay. I'm just sprinkling this in a couple of different areas. Uh, it sticks to the base coat pretty well. And once the base coat is dry, it's time to add some color to the mix. I'm using Liquitex because I love Liquitex. Some of this is heavy body, some of it is basics. I'm just using what I have around the house. And starting with a dark brown and really, really over brushing as I go, I want to get it into all the nooks and crannies, but I don't want it to gum them up and fill my detail in. I want to keep that detail. going in with some greenish browns and kind of scumbling it around like pushing and twisting my brush so that it's a very uneven intermixed kind of color job i definitely focused a lot of the green around the bottom and work my way to sandy grays with much lighter paint applications and some dry brushing as i go My last layers of paint are super light, but I'm just brushing it over the very highest peaks of texture, just trying to get some lovely little highlights. The base and very bottom of the rocks is painted with green and black. And then once all of that is dry, I'm using ultra matte medium as a base to do a dark wash. So a little bit of black and green, the ultra matte medium and lots of water. So it really seeps into all the cracks and crevices and textures. The facade is painted with cream mixed with a little bit of that same dark wash. I just went right over the rocks with that cream. And then again with various layers of brown to get the rocky texture. The window dormers I stained with thinned out brown paint and then touched with a little bit of dark green just to get a weathered mossy look. I used that same paint on the darker areas of the shell, which I kind of blended into the stripey bit at the front using some brown paint. This is probably the bit that I've been looking forward to the most. I'm so excited. I used a little bit of tacky glue as well as super glue because I really wanted this to set perfectly in place. Isn't it darling? It's really coming together. Again, more tacky glue and a little bit of super glue as well on the top of our stand here. <sighs> and she's in place. I built the deck off screen, but here I am adding it in place. It's just coffee stir sticks, which I stained with watered in paint. I added a little bit of extra rock underneath just to balance out everything visually. Cork blended in with more clay and painted. I used some tacky glue to add in some moss. It really helped blend the areas where the house meets the rock and then added some more down by the water, or where the water will eventually be. I used what's called scenic glue, which is a really watery mixture. It looks bubbly here because I had just shaken up my bottle. I believe this is another Black Magic Craft recipe. I'll leave links in the description. Um, it just kind of helps keep everything in place and allowed me to shape the moss to my liking as well. And now for a quick sewing break. I'm kidding, but I do need thread. This is where I keep all of it. I'm just kind of grabbing a couple different colors and some string because I have to figure out how to make a tiny, tiny ladder. I'm thinking rope ladder will do. I ended up using this beige cotton thread and it took me hours to figure out that if I glue the rungs onto the string, I can then tie knots around it. And it's so much easier. 
I spent, I cannot tell you how many hours fiddling with this and I did not actually come up with the glue thing. My boyfriend did. But here she is finished. I used itty bitty pegs that allow me to glue the ladder to the top of, what is it? That is a deck porch thing. This took about three tries before I got it figured out. But the ground level was super simple. I just cut off the bottom of the string a little bit more than I wanted showing. Threw some glue on there. Uh, decided I was throwing this paintbrush away because that's super glue. But yeah, smoothed things out and then put some more ground cloves over it. And I ended up just covering the ground layer with that clove. What house is complete without a teeny tiny fireplace? So, shazam! Bits and pieces of cut and swab, filed and cut into pieces, glued together, and then gilded, because why not? We had a nice shiny base, and I don't have any silver paint, or any shiny paint for that matter. It was just a tiny bit too long, so I snipped it and then added some weathering in various shades of teal and green and black. And a little smoke, which was super fiddly to glue in place, got stuck to my fingers a bunch of times, but I think it's adorable and it worked out. The final step in our project is high gloss Mod Podge for a little bit of a water effect on the lower levels. And here we have our final house. I am so in love with how this turned out, even though at the end there are some things I wish I had done differently or thought ahead about. I wish I had embedded some tiny shells in the rock or done some fossils or something. I guess this just means I have to do another one.